is going on guys? Good afternoon, welcome back. So, for those of you who are wondering who don't have to deal with winter, yes, winter sucks, it sucks really bad. So, first part of today, giving Andy a hand, we're gonna get the trailer loaded up here. Probably wondering what we're even doing with the trailer. Uh, you guys know that we are gonna be fixing his bed. So, we're gonna be taking his bed completely off. We got some people coming by to give us a hand and we're gonna throw the bed on the little mini trailer and then it is off to good buddy marks to get the wheel well rust repaired so that is what we are doing this first part of this afternoon and uh, quite frankly i don't know what the uh, the rest of the day holds so that's what we're doing right now we're trying to clean off some ice so that when we go to walk up here with the bed nobody slips and dies so what do you say andy uh Second part of the day, got Andy's new uh, upgraded steering, uh, which we went over before. That link for this upgraded steering stuff, big beefy OEM stuff down in my description. Uh, he got that as well, got that measured up to make sure that it's pretty close to what the OEM was. We're still gonna get an alignment afterwards, but uh, that should take care of that. We have to get the pitman arm, because it comes with a updated pitman arm, which is still over there, and a new Bilstein shock. So uh, we're gonna get that off which we don't have a socket here big enough. We'll have to go run over to my shop eventually once the bed is taken off. Nice minivan, Mark. You like that? Look at, those, look at those CB whips on that thing. I got rid of all the trucks. I'm done. You sold all your trucks for a minivan. I'm done with the easels. What do you have in your hand there? I got sugar-free candy. A what? Sugar-free candy for your shop. We're all going on diets. I'm, yeah, I'm on a diet for sure. We're all going on a, a diet. A seafood diet. Sugar-free candy, just make sure you stock up on toilet paper. <laughs> what the hell is this? Did you you did not buy this? I got sugar free candy. You're you're ridiculous. We got we got we got good buddy Mark. We got brother Nick here. It's time to lift this Andy. bed off. Nobody said go yet. I'm stuck right there. So we're losing light a little bit here, but I wanted to briefly just explain to you, well actually Mark was gonna, I, I pried Mark's arm to get him to explain exactly how we're gonna fix this. So technically there's two ways. We're gonna be using patch panels, but I guess the most correct way would be to get bedsides, but that pretty much comes down to a dollar amount, you, yeah. would, you would say, because a bedside, even for a short bed, it's like 700 bucks 700 a side for, for a good one. Not so what's a one. what's actually because I don't even know what's involved with changing a bedside. You got to undo it from well, the, basically the spot weld cutters that you bought. OK, OK, you'd go in and cut all the spot welds. OK, all the way around along the top flange here. So there's spot welds along the top flange too, all the way around. All the way there. Then they come down the back with a tailgate would go to jam. OK, down the back all the way to here under here. There's spot welds on the inside to the bed brace bracket, which is part of this. Oh, okay. So it's spot, not spot weld on the outside, it's spot weld on the inside, so you cut them on the inside. Okay. Then in here, you have the spot welds that go to the inner wheel weld. So would you say, for labor-wise, is it is it less labor to, is it less time to take that bedside completely off as opposed to the labor of doing a patch panel? Absolutely. Oh, it is, okay. It is, it is okay. because you're cutting down the body work time drastically. So that pretty much explains the complete entire bedside way again. And like we said, it's just more of a cost time where 
<laughs> Why do that when you got a good buddy Mark? So exactly. these so these patch panels that we have here that Mark's holding on like a dear baby, which uh, are quite a bit heavier metal that which Mark was explaining. These I think Andy spent what are they a hundred? They're about a hundred bucks a piece. About a hundred bucks a piece. These are made by a company called Sherwood. Okay. And they're generally the better ones to get. Are you sure about your wood? I'm sure about my wood. <laughs> and um, they're just a little thicker, so they okay. make it easier on on welding them because when you weld these in. You know, a, a lot of people. You know, and I'm not saying they're wrong. And, and I I'm see like, a lot. Of, I see a lot of people, and I'm not calling out Pennsylvania because I'm sure everybody else does it. But I've seen some Pennsylvania trucks because they have inspection where they have to pass. They'll literally rivet this thing in just, just, just the, yeah. just the way it is, just to pass inspection if they don't really, you know, care about it like I've, the way you're doing. I've heard of people, you know, cutting and gluing these in. Right. I was going to say, explain a little bit about the gluing as well. It's it's not really the way to do it because the glue in the heat, the sun in the summertime will shrink back and you will see a line around here. And a lot of people also will cut this a half inch less and then step flange the edge basically. Oh, okay. The tool. So this sits and when it's welded it's flush. I do not like doing them that way because of one reason. Moisture will get inside from the backside. Okay? Then what happens is it starts spreading the two metals apart over time and it pops your body work. So what I like to do is see all this here it's rusted up to here, right? Right. So, I'll and this, this, this isn't really not to cut you off. I apologize. Well, you this, are. this, well, I know. I'm sorry. Greg, what a dip. Anyway, um, this one isn't bad. No. Right. So what I'm saying, you, we, we've seen them all the way up here, all the way over here. If you catch them early enough, it, yeah. it, it doesn't, it spreads. Feel behind it. His well, the inner fender well, is perfect. Oh sure. man! Oh yeah! So we're gonna oh, be able to yeah. utilize everybody like, get in there. Fender wells or anything like that. So that's actually really good. And technically, on this one, if you wanted to, you could cut them real low. You know, depending on after you cut it, you you look behind it, you right. make sure the metal ain't. Right. If you, you just... see any rust back there, then just keep going until you get the fresh metal. Mm -hmm. So basically, what I'll do is I, you know, I'll I'll cut I'll cut a peekaboo first. <laughs> Well, that's what I'll do. I'll cut a peekaboo first. I'll cut it like this out. And just cut it real low and then kind of take then a look. And check it. And if it looks, if this, if there's still gray primer back there, stop right there. Okay. Stop right there and you can go ahead and... Because... Why, why get into all up here? Because the higher it comes, the more... Yeah. Why keep your body work all the way up top here when you shouldn't have to? Okay. So if you're perfect and, like I said, you don't see any surface rust in the back there, you got factory gray primer, then, you know, basically run it like a fender flare. Right around there. So you're saying you're saying you're not even util. If it doesn't come down here, you'll cut this. Well, they you'll make cut these this long anyway. You see? Right. Well, I'm so, just saying you'll cut it where. Yeah, where I basically need to. Like, like I said, depending on this clean metal back right, there. Right. Right. But there's cases where my truck. When I did my truck, the driver's side on my truck, it was rotted up to here. Mm. So I had to keep the height the same. Okay. So I pretty much came across here like this. And you just nipped off the edge I right there. I nipped off the edges like that came down here and I just kind of, you know, ran with it. And I still wasn't, you know, I mean, it came out great and everything. Shut up, your bed is absolutely 100% perfect. It is, it, it's not perfect, but I, it is perfect. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so getting back to- 80% of the time it's perfect 100% of the time. Yeah, getting back to not step, step flanging it. I like to cut the panel exactly to the size I cut, butt it together and do a continuous weld right across, no starting, no stopping, no pinholes, because then you have a nice sealed weld across there. Then, you know, grind it nice and smooth so you're down to minimal plastic, keep the heat real low, because these beds do warp. Even with the heat super low, they're gonna warp. TIG weld them, they're gonna warp. They're just, they're very thin beds. Yeah, you could you could breathe on, you, yeah. could, have, you could have an old man uh, fall on your bed at Lowe's and uh, wrinkle it. Exactly, <laughs> I've, I've seen it happen, it's not perfect. In person. In person. On your brand new truck. And he did. The poor guy did. And yeah, we won't get into that. It's a touchy I'm, subject. I'm not going to mention his name. He is buying me a new bed. <laughs> Edward, Edward Slipsers. Yeah. But anyway, so that's basically, you know, what we're doing. All right. And, uh, you know. I know you guys have asked to see that quite a bit uh, as far as the, the, you know, the proper way that we'd like to do the bedsides. I mean, in a perfect world, you know, the, the, oh, who we got, who we got? Coming and, through. And again, Greg. You know, you're, you're, you're gonna, you know, even no matter how smooth you make it, there's gonna be a transition here. So if I don't, running, I don't see one on your bed. I know, but listen to me. You're <laughs> running here, your plastic, your plastic and your finishing plastic is going to be, you're gonna have a line out to here by right. the time you're done doing it. And now, another thing that I do is, and anybody that is doing these, is because I've seen it done on other trucks in the past, they weld in the backs and they don't put nothing on them back there. 
So what I suggest to do is make sure the back, you can reach up above here, you can reach your hand above the whole wheel well. Right. Clean it up, okay, sand it down. I like to run over to a little like, you know, cookie disc, 36 grit disc on a roll lock disc. And I like to put a coat of basically fiberglass on the inside because it keeps it water sealed. So basically, I'm sorry, let me go back. A little coat of etch prime. <laughs> Mark. A little coat of fiberglass on the inside. It keeps it nice for anything. If you do miss that tiny little pinhole. Now you're talking about on the inside now. You're not even this, inside. on the inside. Sealed. You really like water seal on the back of it because it would have made welder. You could still have a little, you know, gas pocket pinhole so small that you won't yeah. see. And if you leave that and water gets back there, it's going to pop your body work right Right, away. because the whole, the whole culprit, especially on long beds, is long beds have a pocket Correct. right above here. Now, short beds don't have that pocket. This still happens on short beds. But on long beds, the uh, bed pocket right here, water goes boop directly right down there. Is there foam or something in there? Yes, what is that's exactly. It, that the, it holds the, the, the water. The, the, the killer of these beds is right in here, okay? Dodge, you know, the great people of, of, of Chrysler Motor, whoever they, whoever they are now, Fiat, they put a nice bead of, um, basically it's called like a Silipreme. They put it in there. It's supposed to keep the water from getting down the flange. They should have just left it alone. Yeah. Because that just, it's like a foam. It just, it's just like putting a sponge. Yep. Yep. And it never dries out. Yep. It never dries out. So that's basically, uh, you know. I mean, in my opinion, in my opinion, pros versus cons is, I guess, depending on the truck the bed is going on, what I usually weigh my options is, by the time you were to pay a body guy to put bed sides on, so let's just take bed sides. So if you're doing yeah. both sides, that's about fourteen to $1,500 a bed side. And then you have labor on top of that. Top of that. You know, so you might you might be up to six, 700 bucks in labor, and then you gotta paint. Yep. So I mean, you you are easily, if you're gonna do bed sides on both sides, short bed or long bed, you're, you're looking at pretty close to 2,500 to three grand yep. wrapping up in a bed. That's why a lot of guys will either do this option or just find a southern rust free bed rust -free and bed, yeah. and run that you know because you can pick up one of those beds for thousand fifteen hundred tops you know you get lucky I, I found a couple brand new mint long beds for four or five hundred bucks if you're searching hard enough but you know the money you get wrapped up in bedsides if technically yes it's the correct way but man the money you got wrapped up in it is you know you, yeah. you could total one of these fiat trucks with a with a bed that much money in it. Oh yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Mark, thank you for the explanation. You're the man. That's, uh, that's uh, all I got. So you got the GBM GBM bedside edition coming right up for Andy's uh, Mega I'm Cab. Not, not saying my way is 100 the right way, but it's the way that's been working for many years. Yep. Yep. Yeah. There you go. I thought guns for this. You don't need a Milwaukee gun. You're Andy. Not powerful. So, you want to explain what you're doing? And and I. Oh, so you're gonna put bags in it too? So we're gonna put an airbag kit in that, which we'll show you guys, and we're gonna take off the gooseneck kitch for now. And he's gonna clean all that up, either uh, pour 15 that or get it powder coated. Powder. Powder. Mark, what are you doing? Get your hand. You don't need that, right? Get your, get your hands off that diff cover. No, you don't need that, right? You what? That you're gonna get rid of that. The diff cover? I got a nice one for you. A stock one? I got a nice OEM one. Yeah, he'll trade you straight up. What a straight deal! Up. What a deal! I'll even paint it white for you. I'll wind up my truck price. So for those of you who are wondering who maybe don't know exactly on these third gen what a gooseneck hitch looks like, these are the bars that they let, this, this can actually be installed with the bed on. What they do is they have you put these frame rails in first, then you kind of lift up the center section and it's kind of bolted right here uh, with the one way, uh, what are they, uh, what are those called? Carriage bolts. They got yeah. carriage bolts. And then they have you attach this side bracket, which uh, I think there's one bolt, this bolt is through that. This bolt through bolts to there through the frame and then they have what Andy just took off is basically this C clamp right here and then it bolts yeah right there and then it's then it bolts right through here and here so it's actually in my opinion surprising the way this is attached to the frame and how much weight they rate it for because really it's C clamped there one through bolt and that's pretty much it. Yeah. But this is hey, identical, identical to mine. That's why they have engineers, yeah. people, who, people who know things and stuff. So after a whole lot of talking and BSing in the garage with Mark and Andy, just kind of hanging out, uh, we are back inside. Never really made it over to the shop. 
today, this afternoon, that's okay. I'm not really worried about it. Uh, wanted to give Andy a hand trying to keep his progress moving a little bit uh, so we can get his truck done uh, and ready for the spring as well. So uh, that's pretty much going to do it for this video. I did actually film some more of mail time, which I'm going to throw in here at the end. I didn't want to make yesterday's video uh, 30 minutes long, but hopefully you guys enjoyed a little bit of that talk about uh, how to fix the rust on your bedside. That's kind of how we do it. Um, everybody's got their own way to, uh, you know, build their castle, cut their pie, whatever, whichever analogy you want to use or however you say that. But there's, there's many different ways to do things. This is the way we kind of choose to do it. Mark is, he, he doesn't sell himself uh, too much, but everything that I've seen from Mark is perfect in my opinion. He does a wonderful, amazing job. So we're going to let him take care of that on Andy's bed. Um, a couple other paint things to fix on Andy's truck as well that Mark's going to uh, help us with and take care of that. So we'll show you guys all that. Whew, I need to slow down a little bit. I'm talking kind of fast, but... <clears throat> That's pretty much going to do it for this video. I uh, just want to say uh, I haven't really said it in a while. Thank you guys so much for all the support over the last year. Um, if you're new, if you guys have been here since the beginning, thank you guys so much. Um, I, I love all you guys and the support that you guys give me. I do appreciate it. All the all the nice, awesome comments really keep me going. Um, it's it's awesome to see. So thank you guys. Thank you guys to all, everyone who supports Wrenchworks, the brand that we kind of started uh, that really supports this channel, supports me. Kind of is the the backbone and the theme of you know you guys in the garage doing your own work getting it done um, really supports you guys so hopefully you guys enjoy that we're going to be having some new things come out very very soon also make sure you guys keep motorama on your schedule february 17th and 18th me mikey g the whole gang the whole crew dirty diesels john muldoon will all be out there so uh, that's in harrisburg the farm show complex i'll be there all day saturday all day sunday Alrighty, so first one besides our man bill this one is from michael taylor as always Always, guys, P.O. Box is down in the description if you guys want to send anything. Open this bad boy up. Look at that. Wallet Ninja. Look at that. It shows you all the uses on the back. Look at that. I'm guessing that you stick this in your wallet and it does a whole bunch of everything. Oh, look at that. And some pictures. Look at this. Look at this. Look at that. That's a nice truck, buddy. All right. We got a letter here. Dear Greg, just wanted to... Dear Greg, just wanted to say thanks. Love your channel. Been watching since you since 10K. You are by far my favorite YouTuber. Just keep doing what you are doing. Can't wait till you get 100K. We are almost at 100K. I have some stuff for you guys. Uh, also, congrats on the baby coming. It will change your life for sure. He's got one of his own. This will help open up my boxes because I always just use a razor blade. Uh, a couple pics of my truck, 9812 valve. A lot of plans in the future. Nice. He said his fiance laughed at him when he said they wanted to send something in. Oh man. Cool. Thank you very much, man. I really appreciate it. This next one is from Alan and Hillary in Oregon, it looks like. I need, oh, let me open up my Ninja here so I can open up this box because I actually don't have a razor blade at the house. Sorry, I don't have a table to like show you guys this stuff. I left my tripod. Oh, I hear metal. All right, there's a note here. Is that pictures? I see pictures. Look at that. I didn't even read the note yet, but look at that camper setup. That's pretty damn serious. Look at that. Whole lot of fun. Oh, that's a ra four seater razor. Look at that. All right, let's see here. Greg, first off, just want to say I love the channel. Finally, I have a consistent diesel specific show channel to watch Cummins specific trucks. Thank you. You're welcome. Next, I'd like to thank you for keeping it clean. I can't get enough of the bad. I get enough of the bad language at work, so it's nice to be able to come home and watch a show about diesel trucks without the foul shop talk. I do my best. I really do. I, I try. Is this thing focusing? It's not now. It's not focusing. This is a insanely, insanely, awesomely nice note by my man Alan here. He's got a couple questions, which I will uh, get back to him. Um, and the last paragraph is, please keep up the hard work. Allie is so awesome for supporting you. Make sure you have a good balance. Good luck with the race truck, the 08, and the baby. I will be watching the whole time. Alan from Oregon, thank you so much. So he has a couple things in here. He has a painless wiring auxiliary circuit here, which looks like it has a whole lot of plugs and relays all in one. A lot of you guys probably have heard and seen, oh, here we go, it's already open, uh, of painless wiring. They make it. Well, painless, I guess. It's already uh, all hooked up and connected for a couple circuits, it probably looks like. And it looks like some possible wheel spacers. We can do something with them. Um, so thank you. 
Thank you very much, Alan. I appreciate that. I'm not sure if we are going to use these or not, but he said if I don't use them, don't feel bad. So uh, we'll see. We'll, maybe, we'll, we'll use them for something. We'll make something out of them or use them. Um, and that's pretty much it, guys. Guys, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching. Hit the thumbs up button. Hit the like button. Subscribe. I'll see you guys tomorrow. See you.